So before refitting this, I decided to check the filter. I was a bit dubious with these. They're wired permanently across the main socket, and that means that uh, whenever these are plugged in, uh, they do have mains across this filter. Now these do vary quite a lot. Sometimes it's just a coil. Um, this one had a couple of caps and um, they're potted as well, so it's a real pain to get them out. And um, with the multimeter, the caps read okay, but when I put it onto the high voltage leakage tester, which I will show in a future video, um, it was extremely leaky, so I decided to replace the two caps. And um, what I'm going to do is just put a couple of um, XY caps in there and um, that uh, should suffice. It doesn't really need this at all. There's a big transformer on the input, so it's kind of not needed these days, but I'm going to replace those um, caps anyway and uh, then refit the uh, rear cover. It's just soldered on. And uh, to get this open, all you do is you gently heat up the entire unit and then once it gets hot enough to melt the solder, this will just lift out to a certain um, extent. It only goes as far as the lead will allow, of course. Um, but then you can get the potting compound out and remove the old components. So uh, while I was doing this, I also found some other issues. Uh, one of the leads uh, had broken off the main switch. Now almost certainly it did that when I was taking it out. Um, but it looks like there was only one or two strands holding it on and it does have mains on this. So um, it's perhaps as well that uh, it snapped when it did. I do tend to examine these anyway and look for anything that's likely to fail and uh, probably would have found it but uh, there's always a danger you can miss something like this and if it comes off um, and touches something it can do a lot of damage. Okay so I'll get this rebuilt and then I can refit this to the lower part of the chassis and we can start to reassemble the entire unit. Okay that's the unit resealed I've put a couple of X, Y caps in there and um, they are uh, effectively ones across the live and neutral and then there's one from the live to ground and neutral to ground. And uh, someone's bound to ask, so the way I go about resoldering the cap is you just get a large high capacity soldering iron. It's set to about uh, 340 degrees, put some standard solder in there and then just slowly bring it down the seam. If you run it at the right speed it will make a very nice job of soldering the uh, plate back on. Don't get it too hot of course, you don't want to start melting the uh, wire. Uh, I did replace the two wires because they got fairly hot when I was removing it so that just needs to be reattached and they're just um, soldered uh, with some heat shrink onto the um, caps inside. Uh, it's not potted, I didn't bother potting it, but I did put some bigger heat shrink around the caps themselves just to make sure that they are uh, in no danger of touching the sides. And uh, that is now ready to be refitted. I can reattach the wires I disconnected, um, just the live and then the live to here and the neutral to the um, selector switch and uh, this can then go back into the um, bottom part of the chassis and I can then refit the CRT and the hinge bar. So I've reinstalled all the boards, the chassis and uh, the CRT and uh, I went through all the boards in the same way that I went through the uh, logic board uh, tested all the components as far as I could. I didn't video that. I'm pretty sure you're all getting tired of watching me uh, fool around with a multimeter, but it was the same process. Uh, just going through and uh, checking all the uh, signal paths, looking for anything that uh, didn't appear right. And uh, found a few things, uh, mostly um, poor soldered joints as I found on the uh, ROM card. So I fixed those as I went. Uh, replace one resistor that looked a bit uh, the worse for wear, cleaned the, all the contacts on all the edge connectors, cleaned the pins on the CRT, gave everything else a really good clean. I'm just in the process now of finishing off the keyboard, so I've taken that apart, cleaned all the various parts. Uh, it wasn't actually assembled correctly when I got it. Um, let's turn it over. There's a metal plate on the bottom, three screws hold it in place. And when you take this out, there is uh, supposed to be a grommet in this hole. The grommet's on the wire, but it wasn't 
in the actual hole so I think somebody's taken this apart uh, and not put it back on the way it's supposed to be um, so what I've been doing here is uh, cleaning all the switch contacts so you can of course just completely remove this plate you can then get to all the switch contacts and the uh, so these basically are the strobing uh, transistors I've checked the contacts on all of them make sure they're all clean um, use whatever method you want to clean them it just depends on how bad they are and uh, what I can do now is refit the plate it's nice and clean inside so no signs of anything um, under stress uh, there's no liquid damage anything like that so I can now get the keyboard reassembled get it put into the machine uh, I can then try and power the machine back up and see if I've managed to destroy it. Okay, that's the keyboard back in the machine, giving it a uh, good clean as you can see. I have not yet refitted the uh, register display module, so that goes inside in this area, and I'm still waiting for some replacement bulbs for that. And um, next step is we'll power it up and see if I've uh, managed to destroy this calculator. Okay, so we'll power it on. Um, I would say that before I plug this all together uh, with the main power connector, that's the connector at the back on the left here, disconnected, uh, I did check the 15 volt supply and give it a bit of a tweak. It was a, a bit on the low side, uh, so that's now been adjusted. So I'm fairly confident that the voltages in here are correct, but uh, whether it still works or not, uh, we're about to find out. So it's drawn about the right current, um, just under half an amp. As I say, there's no lights uh, and no bulbs in here, so it's not going to show us anything. And the CRT is coming back up, so that's looking quite good. Okay, what's probably not apparent on the video is the CRT display is much better than it was. It was a bit uh, kind of blurred and distorted before. And it's now very clear and sharp, much, much better than it was previously. So it's looking a lot better. I still need to uh, adjust for this distortion down here, but the actual quality of the, the display is uh, far better than it was And most importantly, it is still working. So um, that's looking quite uh, promising. The next thing I need to do is uh, reload the diagnostic program. As I said before, I was having an issue with it where it would uh, run for a minute or two and then it would uh, either crash or start doing very strange things. So in the next video, we will reload the diagnostic program and uh, see if the calculator actually behaves itself now. I will also refit this uh, display so we've got the calculator looking as it should and um, from that point on what I intend to do is look at each of the boards in turn and we'll start looking at the signals and looking um, at exactly how they function with the machine actually up and running. It's far easier to explain how the circuits work when the machine's operational than uh, when it's just a pile of boards on the bench. Um, but either way, it's looking much, much better than it uh, was before. Nice clean display uh, with all the scratches polished out of the display. It also looks a lot better. I've cleaned up the case as well, cleaned up the keyboard, and it uh, looks almost like a new calculator. I have another one to do, of course, and I'll be doing the same with that, uh, giving it all a really good clean, testing every single board, cleaning up the display, uh, polishing up the bezel. Uh, it really is worth the effort to clean the bezel like this. It does make the entire display much better. Also taking out the CRT and cleaning the front face, cleaning up the contacts, uh, does make the display very much clearer. Uh, as I said, it was kind of, wasn't so much that it was just blurred, it was uh, kind of distorted, like you're looking through a, um, a dirty sheen, uh, which of course we were because the inside of the bezel was dirty and the front face of the CRT was dirty and with the contacts um, not being uh, properly cleaned it does tend to make the display uh, look a bit poor. So 
Okay, that's it for this video. Um, luckily, it is still working. Whether it's working any better than it was, uh, I don't yet know. And uh, we'll find that out in the next video.